In this video, we're going to build a website and a portfolio to showcase your work as a videographer. Now, if you watch as much YouTube as I do and YouTube content creators, then you hear them talk all the time about how much a website or a portfolio is important to showcase your work. But something that I've never seen any of them do is actually talk about how they build a website specifically for themselves. Or if they do, then they breeze past it really quickly. So in this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to jump into the process of actually making a website and how to organize it in a way that's not going to make people confused as to where they are within the website. Now, I know that this doesn't necessarily seem like something that's going to be fun for people who do videography. You know, I'm a camera person, or I'm an actor, or I'm a director, I'm not a web designer. But if you want to have a cohesive brand and you want to market yourself to clients who are actually going to pay you for your work, then putting together a website like this, or any kind of showcase of your portfolio or work, is going to be very important because they need to understand what kind of brand that you are, what is your style, what kind of stuff do you like to shoot. If you don't, it's all a shot in the dark and it's very hard to market yourself to people and make them believe that you're going to be able to deliver on what they want. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you the website that I have as it stands and I'm actually wanting to overhaul my website because I've moved past the point where it's just a portfolio and I'm now starting to market myself as somebody who can be hired to do professional work for businesses. So I want to cater my website towards that as well. So I'm going to show you my methodology about how I organize my projects, how I organize the website and go through the user experience and what kind of assets and what kind of custom pieces that you need to make to make your website beautiful and make it stand out. So without further ado, let's jump into the screen recordings and we'll take a look at the website as it stands and how it's going to turn out. All right, so we're starting out by taking a look at the website that I have built in the way that it's looking right now. Now this is the homepage of my portfolio as it stands. The first thing that you see here is my logo, my slogan, uh, some nice photography that I got on one of my projects, and my demo reel. Now, the website builder that I'm using to make this is Adobe Portfolio. Now, as I had mentioned, this was a uh, website builder that I haven't heard a lot about. It's a website builder that's actually provided by Adobe themselves. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you have free access to use this website builder to make your portfolio. And uh, it really surprises me that a lot of people don't use this more to their ability. You know, I have a lot of friends who use uh, Premier products and uh, use the creative cloud, but don't take advantage of this to showcase their work So I wanted to show you guys what this program is capable of today. So my demo reel there I'm not gonna play that you can go watch that on my channel if you are interested But directly beneath it. I have view my work and then I have all of my relevant social media links um, I think they're just good things to have uh, so, so if somebody happens to stumble across your website or if you are applying for a job, they can look at the way that you have your professional image set up on all of these different platforms. It's just good practice to have. So if we jump into my work, this used to be my homepage. I created a moving masthead with some of my old projects on it just to show some of the work that I liked to do and some of the work that uh, I had been paid to do. So. I always thought that gave it a very uh, good look, and I'll show you how to do that uh, uh, going along. Once again, we got my name and uh, my slogan there. And then if we move down here, we'll see that we have all of the projects that I've ever worked on just nicely laid out in a nice grid formation. Now, originally when I made a portfolio, I thought I wanted to break it up amongst like personal and commercial work, but as I'm sure a lot of people uh, find when they uh, get started, you don't have a lot of pieces to showcase. So for me, I've kind of thought going for volume and making it look like there was a lot to show would be a better demonstration of what I was capable of. But that scale has turned to the fact that now I have enough work in different categories to be able to showcase different parts of my workload. That's why I want to do an overhaul on this website now. But we have things like unique cuts, affordable power sports. These are professional projects that I got paid for, uh, Appalachian, Blue Ridge, Cyclist, Crucible, these are all personal projects, but in this grid you would you would never know that, so that's why I need to make the change now because I have enough of that stuff to separate it up. Now one thing that I did that was very specific to my websites and uh, is going to help set yours apart is having some Photoshop knowledge and 
making custom covers for each of these pages. So on most of these pages, not the most recent ones that I added, but on a lot of them down here, you'll see that each page actually has rollover pictures and then custom made pictures. So, you know, I would get, say for like Blue Ridge here, I would uh, make a very nice uh, square image or uh, just slightly bigger than a rectangle. I think like a one and a half by one. So 1500 by a thousand pixel image to make as the cover for the page. And then when you roll over, it's got a different piece of photography. It's not even something that is necessary, but it just is something, you know, that's when somebody looks at this is going to get the subconscious thought of a little bit more professionalism. So any kind of small details like that you can add will really help set you apart in my opinion. But all of that said, this is a very basic website. It doesn't take a lot. Um, it's all uh, built up. Uh, it, it's all been built up. I'd show you the behind the scenes of this, but if we step over to the next uh, uh, tab here, we'll actually see that I've started to change things around uh, to actually look a little bit different. So. Uh, I can't show you what it used to look like uh, uh, behind the scenes, but I will show you in plenty of detail all of the tools that you can use to get different looks inside of uh, your website. But this tool for being a free addition to any Creative Cloud subscription, I think if it, you don't use it, then it's just a wasted resource that you have. So definitely look into using this tool and making a, a nice portfolio for yourself. But with that said, now you've taken a look at my website as it stands, let's jump into the next stage on overhauling this thing. All right, now here comes the deep dive. So the first thing I did in the process of overhauling the website was writing out on a broad level how I wanted the website to be laid out. I drew out a general hierarchy of how I wanted the user interface to be and then listed which projects needed to be in which of the collections. This was very helpful for down the line when I started moving things in a larger scale so I didn't lose any of my assets or pages and kept to my original thought process. Now, this video isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use this program because pff, who has time to watch that? Instead, what I'm going to do is talk about some specific tools and techniques within the program to get your final look. So let's begin. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the difference between collections, pages, and landing pages. This is important to know because these are the branches from which the tree of your website is going to divide into. Starting with collections, collections are what are going to hold the pages that hold your individual projects. You can put as many pages in your collections as you wish. The most important thing about them is that they will appear in your top bar of your website as navigable buttons that you can click between. The only kind of media that you can add to collections are pages, so this isn't where you're going to be adding your videos or pictures to. Now jumping to pages, pages are what hold each individual project you're going to want to divvy up. Within the page, you can add a myriad of different options like videos, embed windows, text, buttons, pictures, any kind of media you have available to you that you want to display. You also have the most flexibility with the looks of these too, as you can change parameters like typeface, background color or image, and some other fun features that we'll play with in the process. Going from pages, the final broad category I wanted to cover was a landing page. Now, a landing page is like a collection, except for two differences. One, you can't add pages to them, you can only add media like you would on a page. And two, from what I've found in my experimenting, you can only have one landing page on your website. It's a bit irritating because if you want the feature of a landing page for different uses on your site, you have to use a workaround that I'll demonstrate later on. Now that you know the containers your media will go into, Let's talk about the thing you'll be using most in this process, which is the left toolbar. Now, I will be the first to admit that to use this builder, there's a bit of a learning curve to it. This thing is quite confusing at first. For example, say you want to change the font of the title on a page for a project. Should be easy enough, right? Highlight what you want changed, use a toolbar that pops up like in Microsoft Word, and change it, right? That's how it works on the text. Wrong. You have to click the edit arrow on the page itself, go to the toolbar on the left, click the grayed out box at the top that says page title or page header, then click the page header in the drop down menu, then you can format it to how you want it. It's a bit convoluted at first, but once you understand that most of the parameters you'll be editing live within the toolbox on the left underneath different drop down menus, you can actually zip through a lot of these things pretty quickly. But once you've got those two big concepts under your belt, the rest goes pretty easily. So once I laid out all of my pages, collections, and landing page, now it was time to make the custom pieces that were going to fill out the empty boxes. 
So, the first thing that I set up was my landing page. On my landing page, I wanted that to have my six big categories that the website was going to be divided into. Professional and commercial videos, YouTube and short films and original films, a pricing guide, a photo gallery, my upcoming projects page, and a link to my demo reel. From there, I was able to break down those and link those two collections that were going to house my individual pages. So, once I laid the collections, it's time to jump into the pages. I'd already set out a number of pages beforehand that held all of my older projects, so I'd done quite a bit of legwork. That's why there's already quite a few assets within this video. As I said, this is an overhaul. I'm not building it from scratch, but I still wanted to show you the process. So, once I laid out all of my pages, collections and landing pages, it was time to make the custom pieces that were going to fill in the empty boxes that I had added. For my aesthetic, I like to make a white frame around the picture so that if someone has their interface set to a dark mode, it stands out amongst the rest of the thumbnails, in theory that is. I try to use a nice piece of photography that kind of visually describes what the project is about, then add a quick bit of text with the title of the project. It's a really simple piece in the end, but doing every single one of these consistently and making them all match in style does wonders for the final aesthetic of your website. Now, moving on from the pictures into something more mobile. Within collections, you can add something called a masthead. On my old site, you saw I had a video at the top with some of my projects cut together in a quick supercut. You can do a picture in the masthead as well if photography is more your focus, or you just want a nice clean aesthetic, but I wanted to hit the viewer with some motion as soon as they started to view my work, so I carried that on in this one as well. I made two custom mastheads for the two primary video collections that were going to be. One for professional videos and one for my personal projects. Each of them showcases something a little different, signifying you're on different parts of the website. I think they work nicely to give you a bit of taste of what I like to produce. Plus, bonus points if you make yours loop. Once you have all the assets made, it's really a matter of plugging in everything to its respective spots and customizing all the parameters you want. One thing I did to kind of unify all of my pages early on, as you may have noticed, is I added a film grain texture to a global background to all the pages, except for the ones that had custom backgrounds already added. I think it does a good job giving the equivalent of what would be a base coat on a paint job for a car to all the pages. It gives me a good basis to add clear coat and then eventually polish to that. So, we're almost wrapped up with the changes I wanted to make to this site, but I wanted to revisit my original thought, which was to say that having a portfolio of any kind is very important for wanting to grow in the visual arts, and eventually if you want to sell your services to others. Every job that I've been hired on to do for video work over the last couple of years has been because my portfolio stood out amongst others to the recruiters. I've actually had previous bosses tell me how nicely my websites have been put together and that that was what gave me an edge over the other candidates. At my previous job, I was also in a position where we were looking to add another person to our video team and it fell upon me to look at the candidates and the experience that they had through their portfolios and their resumes. And I actually passed on about 80% of the people who applied because their portfolio was either non-existent, not curated well, or just not in line with what we were looking for. So, building your website out well does have a real tangible benefit to it, and I can't suggest it more highly than I already do. It doesn't have to exist to show millions of people your work, just the one or two sets of eyes that'll make the difference in your career. Now that we've put it all together, let's take a look at how it all turned out. Alright, and here we are. So, I've spent about four days redesigning this website, and if there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from this, yes, these tools make it very easy to redesign a website, but the biggest consumer of time when it comes to these sort of things is creating the custom assets that are going to go on each of the pages for each of the projects that you have. I'm sure as you saw in the timeline how many individual pieces had to go in to making each of these individual pages look like their own separate entity, but with all that done, here's what we've got in the end. So, as you saw in the sketch at the beginning, I broke the website into six main areas that I wanted to be redirected to. So, I broke up the projects that I do into professional, commercial, commissioned work, anything that I get a paycheck for, YouTube and personal films, a photo gallery of the photos that I've taken over the years, a pricing guide for different projects that I want to work on, a demo reel, and then upcoming projects. Now, not everything within these is entirely finished. Like, in upcoming projects, I haven't actually added anything yet because, as you saw with all the custom assets I created, 
I do have projects in the pipeline, but I don't have anything to show for them yet. Like I don't have any footage or I don't have any stills to go with them. Maybe what I'll do as they go along is I'll be adding things like storyboards or pieces of dialogue or um, you know script pages, shots that have been taken on the shoot but are still being edited, that sort of stuff to add to the website, just in case these things take a really long time to do. It shows that there's still stuff coming through, through the line. So that's one thing that I haven't finished. The photo gallery, I haven't added pictures to every single one of these yet, but obviously you don't care about that. This is going to be one of the lesser trafficked areas of the website anyways, so I'm not too concerned about that. But the two big areas that I did get a lot of work done were in the personal section over here where I created a custom masthead video. One thing I'm not a big fan of is the text over top of the videos. The white gets kind of blown out on certain shots that are like fully white backgrounds. It's not so bad on this one, but on the other one, it's a little more worse. And inside of each of these pages is the custom embedded video from YouTube. Some of these have uh, like pictures that are used as backgrounds. Some of them used what was called a global picture that just goes across every single page's background, makes it nice and easy for you to style everything. Like if you have one nice texture you want to use, or if you have a specific picture you want to go across everything, the global editing is perfect for that. So that's how I handled all of the videos within the YouTube and film section. And then if I go over to the professional section, this is handled similarly, except I didn't embed a lot of these videos because they're not going to be found on YouTube. Uh, these are things that have just come from my vaults that I've uploaded directly to, and that works just fine. Obviously, as I said, the video still plays in full res, but that shouldn't be an issue with playback. Now, the only other thing that I added that may not necessarily be uh, something that you want to add to your website, but it kind of serves my purposes right now, is a pricing guide. For the type of clients that I have, I don't actually have a lot of clients that are looking to do massive campaigns. I live in kind of a small town, so the clients that I reach out to are just looking to do like a single video for YouTube or for Facebook or wherever, you know, like a mom and pop shop just wants to put something out that shows what they do. So for that option, I've made it nice and easy for them and put a single video price. Now, as I said, this may not be something you want to do depending on your demographic and where you live, because if you define the price beforehand, then you never know how deep somebody's pocket is going to potentially be to work on a project. So it's never something that you want to set up beforehand. But as I said, for my specific case scenario at this moment in time, I think it'll help. So I'm going to just leave that on the page. In addition to that, I'm also doing some weddings every now and then, and I've got a couple of them booked. And it's just nice to have your services nicely laid out so that way you know exactly what you're going to be producing, what they're going to get on the other side. You're not waffling back and forth between. And then you can give them options here. Like, you know, I, le I leave different types of videos available and, you know, do certain upcharges for that. So that's one thing to do. And then a custom video pricing. Uh, that should just go without saying. But when a lot of people are looking at this stuff and don't know how to speak video lingo, uh, that's what you can explain to them. And if you have this, then they can just look at this really quick and that's going to answer their questions that they have without much hassle. And one of my favorite things about this website builder in particular, I don't know if the other ones have this or not, but it's been a tool that I use every now and then when I'm uh, building things within the website, is when you go to preview your website, you can actually see it in the different size devices that it's going to be in. So as you're going to be able to see here, this is what it's gonna look like on a full screen monitor like this. It's exactly how you've been seeing it throughout the video. But say I wanna see what it looks like on an iPad. Well, that's what it's gonna look like if an iPad's standing vertically and if it's going horizontally. And you can see it very clearly. And what I love about Fortfolio is that they resize the assets perfectly for each device. Like I've never had any of my pages get cut off just because I went from you know, viewing it on my computer, that's where I edited it, and then I go to look at it on my phone, and it's like, oh no, my pictures aren't there. No, they're all perfectly right where you left them and all nicely spaced if you did the margins correctly. Looks like I still have to work on some of the margins for the pictures here, but that's something that we can address, and I can fix that now that I've seen it in this view. And even in the preview, you can check all the links to make sure everything works. If I click on my YouTube section, you'll see that all of my pages are still there, still all nicely laid out, and nothing is lost there, except for the background picture behind, but that's okay. That's not really important when you're just trying to check out somebody's work really quick. 
All right, well, if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something along the way. If you don't have a website, I hope this gives you the motivation to give it a try yourself. It's really not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of time and commitment to it, but the end result turns into something that's a really useful asset for you if you're trying to grow your business or you're trying to showcase that you have a lot of work under your belt or you want to grow your work. If you'd like to take a look at the website that we built during this recording, I'll leave a link in the description below, and I'd appreciate it if you checked it out. If you did enjoy if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and possibly subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm just getting rolling on making more videos like this, so if you like this content, give me a comment down below, tell me how I'm doing, and let me know what other kind of stuff you might like to see. That's all for now, I'll see you guys in the next one, thanks for watching.